I was taking my afternoon constitutional through the partial denture department and ran into the manager, Jerry Lord, and I said, Jerry, what's the biggest mistake or the biggest issue that you've seen this week causing your people to have to call doctors? And he said, it's what they call the slippery slope. And this is what the slippery slope looks like right here. The patient only has 22 through 27 remaining. There's no rest preps to speak of. In fact, there's no rest preps. And uh, the doctors asked for a mandibular partial denture. So this patient has already had some tissue and bone resorption, possibly or probably, uh, from her prior partial denture. And without a vertical stop, this mandibular partial denture will slip down that slippery slope of the remaining anteriors with the poor free gingiva waiting for further punishment and future tooth loss. So they designed this partial denture using a lingual plate major connector because there was really no room uh, for a lingual bar. And the patient could sure use a cingulum rest on 22 and 27. And if prepped well and the partials fabricated well, these stops uh, will resist the punishing lingual movement as the patient loads the posterior denture teeth. And so when prepping those lingual rests, you just want to be careful not to create any undercuts uh, as the partial won't seat if there are or the lab will have to block out um, the prep. And so I like to take just something like a 55, a burr that doesn't have any undercuts and just kind of hold it parallel to the long axis uh, of the tooth and just place that rest in there. And so not only are you placing the rest right here, but you've got, you're making sure that you don't have an undercut with the rest of it by using uh, the 55. But really all you want to do is make sure that you don't undercut it or get undercut or place it into an undercut and just some sort of vertical flat surface here. Any flat surface perpendicular to the long axis of the tooth and the partial will be able to engage that and won't cut down and just strip the gingiva away from these teeth over time when this partial is totally tissue borne and not tooth borne at all. So that's, that's really too bad that there's no rest preps uh, on that particular one. If we look at another slippery slope model, this patient's got a bridge from 22 to 27 and um, a lab has fabricated this bridge and unfortunately there is no thought been given to a future possible removable uh, partial denture or a valplast or a flipper or anything. So either the lab didn't ask the doctor or asked the doctor and the doctor said no, but I like to make them anyway. Doctors will tell me, well, my patient can't afford to have that. And I'm like, well, they could win the lottery, you know, between now and then. It's always safer to have them. Anytime a bridge like this comes into us for a PFM bridge, uh, the combo department's all over it, calling the doctor and making sure and almost trying to talk, talk them into those rests because I tell you, we hear more times than not, doctors very nervous about now placing rest preps uh, into porcelain on a PFM that it might all come shattering off when it comes off. So it's very difficult to prep the porcelain uh, without hitting the opaque. So um, it's difficult, again, to do something here. Um, they designed it with a lingual plate and brought the plate in uh, as high as possible to rest above the cingulum, you know, in an attempt to try to get some sort of tooth support and not have it be totally tissue borne. Um, I, you know, if it were a, a Bruxer bridge, you might be a little safer going in and being able to put some lingual rest preps in there. But I understand why the doctor's nervous to go into a PFM and cut that. There's a pretty good chance that porcelain may actually shatter off of there. The right way to do it would have been to have a metal rest prep included in that design on the lingual, somewhere the patient would never see it, uh, when the bridge was designed. And I'm pretty sure that their tongue would get used to it, even if there never was uh, a partial that was done. Now, this got a lot going on here. It's another slippery slope case. The patient has number 22 uh, through number 28 here. And here the doctor prepped um, a nice defined cingulum rest prep on number 22. Now, look at that. There's no undercut. It looks, it really does kind of look minimal. I mean, it's just not super deep. We'll zoom in a little bit so you can see it. But it's enough. That is all we need, that little ledge to hang in on there. Nothing wrong with going a little deeper than that. But you can see as we zoom in the ledge that we have there, and it's a decent ledge. Let's hope it, it shouldn't break. You know, that's not uh, the area where the tooth would typically break. But that's enough for us to engage that with our partial and keep this from driving itself down into the tissue. We see a distal rest prep over here on the other side on tooth number 28. Uh, and we also see some rather prominent tori. We'll pull the camera back just a little bit so you can see those tori that are down there. 
And uh, that's not going to allow a lingual bar major connector. We do not want to impact those uh, tori. So the lab uh, designed it again using a lingual plate uh, major connector, and it's designed uh, above the tori, and it's uh, been relieved. And the rest will certainly function well as vertical stops, and uh, we're going to stand a much better chance of the patient not returning to this doctor in any kind of pain uh, from the tori uh, or from this, uh, this partial overseeding down into the tissue and stripping it away from the teeth because we have a nice occlusal rest making this tooth borne here, a nice uh, conservative eye bar that's going to be very, um, very nice to the tooth when the patient functions on the back of this compared to a circumferential clasp because it disengages as it rotates towards uh, the distal. So those two eye bars there are cingulin prep and our occlusal rest prep here and staying away from those tori. There's a lot going on here but this is a really good solution and the doctor did a lot right with those rest preps uh, to be able to make sure that we have something that should function for the patient for a long long time without any pain and without increasing uh, periodontal situation that could lead to tooth loss.